A reading from the book of Exodus. From the desert of Sin, the whole congregation and the children of Israel journeyed by stages as the Lord directed and encamped at Rephidim. There was no water for the people to drink. They quarreled, therefore, with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to a test? Then, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the children of Israel quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to Him. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Come then, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For He is our God, and we are the people He shepherds, the flock He guides. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear His voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink? You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands, 
and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You're, you people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must, must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Christ is coming, the one called the Anointed. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, this third week of Lent and the next two weeks are marked by special and long gospel passages from the Gospel of John that highlight for us again the heart of Lent, the heart of our life as baptized disciples of Jesus, and therefore the heart of what the catechumens of the church are preparing for, those who are going to be baptized at Easter. And each week, one of these gospel passages focuses on a different symbol of the new life we have by faith in Christ. Today, obviously, it's water. Next week, it will be light with the reading of the account of the man born blind in John chapter 9 and his healing by Jesus. And then the following week, the fifth week of Lent, the theme is life, brought to us through the 11th chapter of John's Gospel with the raising of Lazarus from the dead. At the heart of each of these passages, at the heart of each of these symbols, at the heart of Lent and of the Easter celebration are the words believe and faith. 
In this passage, it's not simply about being nice to someone and giving a drink of water. It's about many Samaritans came to believe in him. In the story of the healing of the man born blind, it's not about doing a good deed to a blind man. It's about the blind man saying, yes, Lord, I believe, and worshiping Jesus. In the story of the raising of Lazarus, it's not just Jesus having compassion on his friends and raising their brother from the dead. It is about the words of Martha and Mary, I have come to believe that you are the Christ. It's about believing in Jesus. He did his miracle so that people could put faith in him. Now that faith is symbolized here by the water. And Jesus said, it's living water. Now, water is a very powerful symbol from the beginning to the end of Scripture. In fact, even just on the natural level, most of the world is water. Most of the human body is water. Water is life. Water is cleansing. And we see it from the beginning of the Bible to the end. In the beginning when God created, He separates the waters above the heavens from the waters below the heavens. And all the way to the end of Scripture, where in the new and eternal Jerusalem, heaven itself, St. John, as he writes that book, says that water was flowing from the throne of God. Picking up on a prophecy of Ezekiel, where water was flowing from the side of the temple, which of course pointed to Good Friday when water flowed from the side of Christ. Representing what? Representing the water that was poured on you and me when we were baptized. Representing the water that will be blessed at the Easter ceremonies and poured on those catechumens of the church who are ready to profess their faith in Christ publicly. The people were thirsty. Does not that represent the thirst of the human spirit for God? The thirst of the human spirit to be set free from the oppression of sin and death. We are all thirsty. And we are tempted to grumble. Notice how they even said, why did you even take us out of Egypt? The temptation when things get difficult in our journey of faith is to say, well, we'll go back to the life of sin. It was easier, but it's not easy. Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. The life of sin is what is hard and oppressive. How did the people get the water? How did Moses give them something to drink? Strike the rock. His staff represented the wood of the cross. The rock was Christ. Striking the rock, Christ Jesus being nailed to the cross. And from his body, the water flowed, just as water flowed from that rock. And St. Paul, as we related yesterday, writes to the Corinthians about the rabbinic tradition that the rock then followed the Israelites on the rest of their journey. And he says the rock was Christ, bringing us therefore to today's gospel. I will give you living water. Believe in me and living water will come out from within you, welling up to eternal life. Let's thirst for Jesus. This is what these readings are urging us to do. Let's realize that faith in Him is the key to life eternal. Let's drink of the living water and let's do one more thing. Let's bring others to that well of eternal life, the living water which is Christ. Let's eagerly bring others there so that they too can say, I have come to believe. Amen.